my heart is beating out of my chest right now. This has to work. Come on, come on. 26, 33. Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict. The last time I've been doing astrophotography here was over a year ago. The last two pictures of the Orion Nebula and the Pleiades. My day didn't start as planned, to put it mildly, but if my plans plan out tonight, this night will be amazing. And just by mistake I found our subject for tonight. Well, one of the two subjects. All right, the plan for tonight, to get an amazing picture of the Pleiades with the new Omegon telescope. And I've got something very special planned with that guy over there. I remembered, wait, the, I the ISS is out, maybe in the evening, right? I quickly jumped into the transit finder. There's an ISS moon transit with the center of the coordinates right where I'm sitting right now. The ISS is gonna pass the moon six minutes after eight, but right now it's half past four, so I will have to wait four hours until I can do anything more. Well, a small update and I apologize this room is now very empty, I guess you can hear a lot. <laughs> it's now two hours later after I drove home in panic because I thought I forgot the adapter for, for the can camera on the telescope. Turned out the M42 to M84, M42 to M48 adapter was on the, <laughs> on the ASI camera. So everything is set up now and ready to go except for the camera still has to go on the back of the scope the moon is pretty high I, I suppose it's about one hour left it should not be too close to the house by the time the ISS passes over and after that I hope the moon is a moon of 50% is a little bit too much for me I could either shoot the play decent RGB could be more or less good, or use the IDAS Nebula Booster filter to get maybe the California Nebula, which I wanted to shoot since a very long time. The last times I was here at my grandfather's house, I shot the first picture of the Pleiades and the Orion Nebula. It was quite fun back there, and, is, and it is still right now, but. I guess you know what happened and this entire building is now pretty empty which is kind of sad. And now I have to wait until, hang on, I even had to get, I even had to uh, get this little body here from home because there's not even a table or a chair in here. It's now half past seven, I'm gonna point the telescope at the moon. The bad thing is that the ISS will be in the Earth's shadow at this point, which means I don't see it coming and I only can hope that the forecast will be precise on the very second. The pass will last one second and I will turn the fastest shutter speed on the DSLR and do as many exposures as I can in this one second. And I hope when these images are there that there will be a small ISS on the half 50% moon. But I think I'm gonna set up now. See you in a bit.
As you can see, the hook is set up. It's, it's tracking the moon at lunar rate. Let's turn the red dot off. It worked pretty good. The batteries of the camera are still charging inside, but it's over here already. I've got the dew heater straps on. I don't want to risk anything. It's, I think, it's zero degrees right now. My feet are already very cold. Turn the red light off. The small table for later is ready. Lunar tracking enabled. So I did a small polar alignment and nothing more. I slewed the telescope to the moon and enabled lunar tracking. It, it should work pretty fine. I will turn the light off. I hope you can see this. Where are you? There you are. That's the view through the Omegon telescope and the... Oh god, I just messed up the shutter cable. I really hope this camera is fast enough and the forecast is as precise as it says to be. T-15, count on running. I'm incredibly nervous, you can't believe it. You don't get a chance like this very often. This has to work, this has to work. T-10 minutes. Count on running. I'm very nervous because T minus 5, but look at this seeing right now. My heart is beating out of my chest right now. This has to work. Come on, come on. Test. 26.33. I did not see it with my own eyes. Oh, no. I don't think it's there. <sighs> it's not there. I have to admit I'm rather disappointed I camped down now a tiny bit. The DSLR is taking now some more shots of the moon. And there's the rest of the hope for this night. This room is a mess right now. I'm just taking 200 images now with the DSLR. And maybe I can do a little tutorial on how to stack them. You can see, uh, no, you can't see that. It's really damn cold. I'm quite disappointed that it didn't work, but I had tons of fun. And now I gotta set up the Omega Q. And after this night, I hope that I can do I want to show you at least something. After this night I hope that I can do a full review on this one. Because many of you want the review of the camera, uh, of the telescope. And I also want to give it and now I'm pretty surprised. But let's talk about the telescope in another video. Yes, the night was indeed very long. But I did not forget our main subject for the night. I managed to catch exactly 3 hours of 2 minute subs on the Pleiades. Alignment and focusing were pretty easy using Nia plate solving and the custom 3D print Batnov mask worked like a charm. The filter was an astronomic CLS CCD and to minimize the effect the moon has on the images I sorted them by brightness and signal to noise ratio. Here's why you should pay attention to the moon when shooting deep sky. These 90 frames were calibrated and stacked in APP and the final touches applied in Pixinsight. Thank you for all the great comments under the last video. The astrophotography guide will be amazing. And also a big thanks to my supporters on Patreon. You guys are the best. I don't plan to miss a single night this winter. There's way more stuff I want to shoot. We are indeed the next generation of astrophotographers. And we will share it with the world. Clear skies and may the night be with us.